Former UNAIDS country representative for Jamaica, the Bahamas and Cuba, Miriam Malua states, Whether we like it or not, sex happens. It happens with people wishing it to happen or not. A lot of rape also happens, which means that some people who are arrested for very petty offences, they go into prisons, they are raped which they didn't want, and they come out with an HIV infection. She went on to say, we have to be pragmatic, we have to be responsible. I am not on the wholesale promotion of persons having sex in prison, but we have to face the reality of our men are having sex in prison, our female are having female um, female to female sex in our prison. We do know that many of our men are part of our, um, of our most at risk populations and so we are, we're genuinely concerned uh, but our hands are tied and for that reason we work along with, with them. They're doing the same prevention, education, treatment and support as, we can, as much as we can. You know it's, we, it's more intense and we try to ensure that it's a sustained effort but we operate within the realm of a one no condom zone and so we have to maintain that position. I believe in being sensible at all times. If something's occurring, then protect. I think they should be freely available. When, when we heard about this from the public and seeing it through the media and, and the television, read it in the newspaper and seeing it, it was, it was real a gross, a disgust moment and something to really think about. Looking condoms in prison among men. It couldn't be. And uh, even now, today, day, no matter what, it will never happen. I am not going to support the authorities of the government giving male, I'm talking about in a male prison, giving males condom, issuing condoms. That is, you know, an abomination. That is so distasteful and disgusting. People would come to me, ask me for condom. No, as a medical doctor, I must confess, I, am a, I have my moral values, but I put medical safety in front of morality when it comes down to my profession. It doesn't mean that I am agreeing with what persons are doing. Yes, there is sex happening in the prison, the male prison. We're talking about male prisons. And you're looking at HIV, AIDS, that is rampant within, within the prisons itself. So one would argue, you know, for prevention sake but I want to ask the question what happened when the condom run out you're, you're predestined these people into sexual act by giving a condom you understand me so when, when you and a condom you're, you're simply telling me you say go and have sex who am I going to have sex with in, in, in prison as a male with a condom you issue a condom to a man you're totally disrespecting it's just like you, you, you're, you're building Saddam and Gomorrah at the end of the day, does condom solve the problem? Look at this scenario. Persons using plastics to improvise for condom. Is that safe? Plastic bag. Persons using used gloves from the doctor's office. Should never ever come to thought to disburse condoms into prison system. It gives individual the privilege to have sex with other men. I used to carry boxes of condoms, leave in my car. My car is usually home. When you carry your car to the prison, it comes out like it's just being manufactured. And what I noticed at one stage, the condoms were disappearing. Hmm? No, I don't know where them go, but I know they disappeared. Is condom working? Right. If it is working, I say go for it. But if it is not working, where do we go from there? In my own opinion, condom does not solve the problem because it has to do with the heart of man. If someone is gang and raped, those who are doing the action, they're not gonna use condom because their whole goal 
is to pass on the age to someone else. How do you reach out to a person like this? What kind of compassion should be shared for someone? What kind of protection should be put out for someone like this? I, for one, doesn't encourage male-to-male -male sex. Believe it or not, it is those who are most homophobic at times become involved in sexual activities. And it is not seen as being homosexual. It is seen as one having power. So the goal should be is a transformation of the mind, not just spiritually, but physically, emotionally, mentally. You got to drive at the core of the issue. You have the person who do the act. This person might not even want this happen to him. And because you have given this man a condom, you've allowed this man to go and take on to this man. Are you saying, therefore, you're going to give inmates condom, especially those who are known rapists, to go and rape other prisoners, but to protect them from HIV? So we have to be careful how we talk about making it available. And in a condom to a man in prison is just as having sex with that man. Because the first thing you give him that condom, you're simply telling him, go and have sex. It's not a matter of a man going to prison and as a man come to prison and say, here's a pack, box of condom. No, no. I am not one who's going to homo, um, legalize homosexuality in an incarcerated um, institution. Right? What I would support is that if you make it available, because many of those who are, as I said before, who are involved sexually, they are returning to our society to, to have sex. You have to be a man, and you have to be a stand-up man. It's an internal problem. It has to do with the transformation of the mind. When the mind is transformed, guess what? There'll be no need for comfort. Condom should be placed everywhere. Placed in hotels, should be placed in jails, should be placed in churches. It's not about, you know, homophobia. It's, a, it's, a, it's just that they respect the respect, the, and, and the pride, I wouldn't use pride in it. Pride is not about it, no time at all. It's not about pride. It's about self-respect, dignity. And it's about principle, and I say it's go back to God's law. We're trying to change the pig from the outside, right? If you take a pig, right, and you take him, wash him off nicely, put a bow tie and a suit on him, sit him around the table, guess what? You have not changed the nature of the pig. All you have done is to change the external. And that is the problem. It's based on your, your company that you keep, the people that you're around, who you associate yourself with. You know, if you find yourself among the wrong person, then this will eventually happen. And if you find yourself to be greedy and licky licky, you find yourself get caught. You know, and it, it is, a, it is a, a moral that is in the prison system. We do know that these persons, you know, are being incarcerated and being of a, that high risk mindset. It might need a little bit more intervention than someone who is not of that similar mindset. So we try to facilitate that. We know that behavior doesn't change overnight. So we try to have a sustained intervention with them, just as we would for the general public. Where as being incarcerated is concerned, our prisons, I feel that if a more thorough educational system is set in place, whereby inmates on entry are given pamphlets, are educated about, about um, sex, about HIV, that will somehow decrease that incidence of sexual activity. We do what as much as we can do, short of a condom demonstration or distributing condoms. So we try to increase knowledge and we try to provide that on, ongoing interaction, which we hope will change behaviors that trend towards any possible sexual activity or any possibility of unprotected sex. You don't know which of these men who are coming from the public or coming from wherever they get sentenced are HIV. Most of these persons are drug abusers to a smaller extent, cocaine users. And as a result of that, they were more up to have higher incidence of HIV on the outside. So entering an institution where human rights are in violation, lack of health, lack of safety, 
you are going to have these disease become more pronounced. 90% of those who enter the correctional system are persons of the lower socioeconomic strata. There are persons who would admit to you on admission that, Doc, I'm HIV positive, I'm not a homosexual, right? So please do not put me over to the homosexual areas. But what happened? Sooner or later, six months to 12 months, these persons, because of the lack of nutrition, a right being breached again, right? Lack of medical care, the symptoms the, of AIDS become more pronounced. Inmates would automatically say, oh, this man is positive, so he is uh, gay. And I have seen people, human rights being breached again. There have been place among these other quote-unquote outcasts, right, and stigmatized. We've been reluctant to take a sufficiently proactive approach. Estimates before had ranged between 6% and 12%. We see inmates who we know, as it was said, that man have been.